Okay, so I think I'm doing this booktube thing right by filming in front of my bookshelves. <laughs> my name is Alyssa and I am back with another video, but I'm not sure if there's going to be a lot of new people in this video or if it'll be a lot of my current subscribers, but I just wanted to give myself a little but I just wanted to introduce myself a little bit. My name is Alyssa, I'm 25 years old and I typically post videos about budgeting. But of course budgeting is not the only thing that I'm interested in. Actually in January, I completely fell in love with reading again. I was the person that in like elementary school, middle school, you could not find me without a book in my hands most of the time and I was a complete horse girl. So typically they were books about horses. But in high school and in college, just the stress of having a whole bunch of books to read for school just basically killed my desire to read anything for personal reasons and I was in a lot of AP English classes and just didn't really enjoy the reading for that and kind of fell out of love with reading in general. But as I said before, I fell back in love in January with reading books. I finished six books in the month of January and also did not finish or DNF'd two more books. I'm learning all this booktube lingo. But I just wanted to show you guys what I read this month, tell you my thoughts about the books that I read, and also show you the books that I could not finish. So the first book that I read this month that basically just sparked my obsession with reading again, I don't actually own. I borrowed it from one of TJ's sisters. I was actually given it by one of his other sisters and it sat on my shelves for, I'm not even joking you, probably at least a year and I just didn't read it. And his other sister texted me one day asking for it back and I told her that I hadn't read it and I'd ha be happy to give it back and she basically was like you really should read it um just just read it and then give it to me when you're done and I was like okay I think I can do that so I picked it up and I absolutely loved it and that book is called It Ends With Us by Colleen Hoover. This book was absolutely amazing I gave it five stars on Goodreads. I think it's kind of funny that the very first book that I read falling back into reading was a five star book, but it truly was. This book totally had me in tears at the end and it was just an amazing read. This book follows a young woman by the name of Lily as she falls in love with a man and there's also someone else in her past that you are reading about concurrently in the book. There's sort of a bit of a past and present aspect. And so you're watching her fall in love with one man as you learn about her love of another man. But the book is really, to me, just about how far you will go in a relationship before it just all becomes too much and it comes to a point where you need to stand up for yourself and make a decision on whether or not you're willing to stay. So this book is honestly one that I wish 18 year old me would have read and if I could help it I would make it required reading for every young woman. Um, would it have stopped me from getting into some dumb situations when I was that age? Probably not but I like to think that it would have given me a little bit of insight but it was absolutely fantastic and I would recommend it to everyone not even just 18 year old girls. 25 year old me absolutely loved it too. So after I finished It Ends With Us, I did pick up another Colleen Hoover book. This one is called Maybe Someday. I borrowed a bunch of Colleen Hoover books from TJ's sister because she owns a lot of them. But unfortunately, this one I hated. <laughs> I thought that the characters in here were pretty awful. But let me just give you a little rundown of what it's about. It is about, I honestly have to look up the girl's name because I just didn't like anyone in the book enough to really care about what their names were but it's about a girl named Sydney who I believe was dating a guy named Ethan was living with him he cheats on her and she has to go find somewhere else to live and I don't believe this is a spoiler oh his name's Hunter <laughs> not Ethan but um yeah it's not a spoiler it says on the back that he cheats on her and um she finds herself captivated by her attractive neighbor named Ridge and he's actually deaf. One thing I did enjoy during this book was that there are songs that you can listen to because the two of them are basically writing songs together. He plays guitar, she um, sings and writes lyrics but I didn't really buy it. Like she seemed to just kind of be good at it out of nowhere without really any explanation. They 
obviously develop some sort of a relationship and I didn't really buy it nor did I like it because Ridge is in a relationship. So she's pissed at her ex for cheating on her and then goes and develops feelings for a man that's in a relationship. So I just hated it. Um, there's a roommate that's addicted to porn and just a whole bunch of stuff that I was just not a fan of. There was really no one in this book that I loved. Ridge's girlfriend was pretty cool but she's barely in the book so I was not a fan. Sydney cried probably 15 times in this book for basically no reason and I just couldn't stand it. I gave this one three stars originally and then took it down to two stars when I really had time to stew over how much I hated it. <laughs> After that disaster of a book, I picked up Truly Devious by Maureen Johnson. This was after I started to kind of delve into booktube and see everyone else's recommendations on what to read. And this is about a mystery. It's actually about a couple of mysteries. So one is set in the 1930s. It is regarding Albert Ellingham and his daughter and wife who are kidnapped. He is the founder of a school called Ellingham Academy where he basically takes a bunch of kids who are bright and takes them to his school and gives them education for free. Um, they can have access to any book that they want. They basically choose what they want to learn and they basically all have some sort of like an area of expertise. Like some kids are like an engineer, some kids make movies, things like that. But there's this awful crime where someone dies and his wife and daughter are kidnapped and there's a sort of ransom letter that is sent to him and it is signed by someone who calls themselves Truly Devious. And so this follows two different timelines, one in the past in the 1930s when the crime occurred and then current day where a girl named Stevie Bell is attending Ellingham Academy and she is very interested in these crimes. She wants to basically solve them because they were never solved. No one ever found out who basically kidnapped Alice and Iris is the daughter's name. So she's trying to find that out and that's basically her assignment through the school is to solve these murders. In present day things start to go wrong in the academy and we kind of see how she deals with that. So I really liked this book. I read it at four stars and I'm actually reading the second book in the trilogy, The Vanishing Stare, right now. And I'm really liking that one too. But this one was so good. Um, there's just a hint of romance in it, but not enough to make me roll my eyes. And Stevie's not the kind of girl that's just gonna be crazy about boys. So I liked that she definitely had her sights set on solving the mystery and I thought this was a really enjoyable book and I highly recommend it. It is set in like a high school setting and it's nothing too much for someone in that age range to handle so that's good to know. The Colleen Hoover books um, are a bit more adult. One more thing about this book is that I just absolutely loved how it was written. Coming from Colleen Hoover books prior this one had such great imagery and I honestly have to find you like something to read out loud because she just has such a beautiful way with words. I find myself rereading some of her passages just marveling at her descriptions and her imagery and so let me find something for you guys. Everything was nooks and corners, every direction just racks of metal shelving that went from floor to ceiling, archive boxes and books in one direction, trunks in another, lamps, vases, extra pieces of furniture, bedsteads stacked by a window, chairs clustered together in a tight communion, ottomans, dressers pushed back to back. There were rolls of old paper, globes, boxes of crystal doorknobs. Stevie felt like her brain had been replaced by a few dozen bees bumping and swirling in her skull. So that's not the greatest example, but she just explains things so beautifully and so descriptively. I think there were better sections a little bit deeper into the book, but I couldn't quote those without spoiling some things. So I just highly recommend picking up that book. So next on my list is A Study in Charlotte by Brittany Cavallaro. And this book I originally thought was a retelling of Sherlock Holmes, but through a female perspective. but it's actually basically just a like present day Sherlock Holmes, but it is a female. It's Sherlock's great, great, great granddaughter named Charlotte. And she actually goes to school with the great, great grandson of John Watson named Jamie. And the two of them 
get into shenanigans <laughs> there's of course a crime that they need to solve and I found this really intriguing I loved the descriptions and I loved figuring out how Charlotte's brain worked um, Jamie was no slouch either he was pretty good at finding things out but of course you know the main person and this is going to be Charlotte. They do kind of hint at the two having a romance but it's not overpowering in this book at all. It's definitely more about their friendship. I really enjoyed it. I didn't give this one a rating on Goodreads yet but I would say it's a solid four stars as well. So another book that I don't have in front of me because I lent it out to a friend is All Your Perfects by Colleen Hoover. I decided to give another Colleen Hoover book a try and I'm really glad that I did because I loved All Your Perfects. It follows a girl named Quinn and a man named Graham and the story of how they meet is actually pretty funny. Um, they meet on the doorstep of Quinn's boyfriend at the time and he has Graham's girlfriend at the time in his apartment with him. Um, so the two kind of sit outside listening to awful noises and trying to figure out what they're gonna do to confront their cheating significant others. <laughs> Um, but they end up kind of starting a romance and you find this out early on because the chapters alternate from being in the past when they met and started to fall in love to being in present day when their marriage is crumbling. And it was simultaneously so fun to read about how they fell in love and also heartbreaking to watch what their marriage had become. And this isn't a spoiler because it is on the back of the book, but their marriage is basically crumbling because of Quinn's infertility and just how it has poisoned like every aspect of her life. And it was so heartbreaking. I just wanted to make sure that I mentioned that so that if anyone is triggered by infertility, um, maybe you skip this one or just proceed with caution. But it was absolutely beautiful and just really highlighted how, you know, in a marriage there's going to be really, really hard times, but it's up to you guys to work through them. But this book made me cry also, and I would say it got probably four and a half stars out of five. Not quite it ends with us level, but it was so good and I absolutely loved it. I think I actually read... Um, a study in Charlotte after All Your Perfects, but I don't remember the exact order. All I remember is that at the end of the month, I think it was January 29th, I decided I can sneak in one more book and I chose another Colleen Hoover book called Confess because her books are such a quick read. I can read them in about two days if I have a lot of time to read. And so I picked up this one and it is about a girl named Auburn and a boy man <laughs> named Owen. And you kind of get a little bit of a peek of the past of Auburn with her childhood love who ends up tragically passing. It doesn't say this on the back, but it does say it in the first chapter. So I don't think it's too much of a spoiler. But then the next chapter is her living in Texas several years later as an adult. And she works as a hairdresser and um, isn't passionate about it at all. And we don't really know what she's passionate about until much later in the book, but she kind of stumbles upon a job posting in a window for an art gallery, and that is how she meets Owen, the main male <laughs> in the book. And of course the two start to fall in love, as they do in romance novels. Basically their lives just can't be simple. Um, Owen has some things in his past that could impact Auburn's present, and it's kind of a can we be together, sh we shouldn't be together type of story. The main part of this book is sort of the reason for the title, which is Confessions. So Owen is an artist and he owns a studio in, I think it's Austin, Texas. Um, but he basically collects anonymous confessions from people that can walk by and then he paints based on their confession. So it's really heartbreaking things that people confess, but they also confess funny things or happy things. But Auburn ends up helping him with his business and it was kind of cool to see her role in his business and all of that good stuff. But I liked this one a lot. I would say maybe it was a three and a half stars. So better than average, I would say. But it didn't make me cry, didn't make me overly emotional. It was good, but I found some issues with the believability of parts of it just from my critical thinking brain <laughs> logical brain 
but that doesn't make it any less of a enjoyable story. And I can't explain it without giving away spoilers. So I just want to say if you have an interest in Colleen Hoover books, this was a good one. I didn't find the characters as irritating as maybe someday. So that's good. And then last but not least, I have two books that I DNF'd this month. And the first one was Wanderlost. I brought this one with me when TJ and I went to Joshua Tree for our anniversary. It is about a young girl in high school named Aubrey. I believe she is freshly graduated from high school. She's like 17 years old and her sister has her whole life together. She's perfect and she is trying to get into politics I believe and ends up as a favor to a politician. She signs up to run a tour through Europe for a bunch of senior citizens and something happens to where her sister can no longer go on this tour and it's kind of Aubrey's fault so they come up with a plan for Aubrey to go instead and Aubrey's a total homebody she has no interest in ever traveling she likes to stay at home she likes being around her mom and so this created a bunch of problems for her this says it on the back so I can tell you guys, but she ends up losing her phone and the whole itinerary that her sister set her up with that was explaining everything that she needed to do, including what hotel she was supposed to go to on the very first day. So that presented some problems, but I just really couldn't get over the juvenile writing in this book. And I'll try and find an example for you. So one example is, quote, <laughs> and speaking of bicycles, Holy bicycles, Batman, end quote. Um, quote, but whatever, because oh my god, I'm in Europe. It looks so European, end quote. I just felt like I would want so much more from a traveling book than oh my god, things looked so European. That's just, it wasn't for me. <laughs> I probably got, I think right around 100 pages in and it is a 300 page roughly book and it was honestly just annoying me so I decided to cut my losses and quit reading it but I think if you are younger and just want to read a cute book about traveling Europe then I would recommend it. I'll probably see if I can pass this on to TJ's youngest sister. Uh, maybe she would enjoy it or someone at her school would but I just think that I will not be reading it. And then the other book that I did not finish was Abundance of Catherines by John Green. I have read John Green books in the past, but this one is about a boy named Colin who has just been broken up with the 19th Catherine that he's dated, which considering he's like in high school at this point, I just find it kind of hard to believe that he's dated 19 girls, yet alone 19 Catherines. And that was kind of my first problem. Like maybe I'm just too closed-minded to open myself up to the imagination of this. And I actually only made it like 30 pages in, which is a little embarrassing. Maybe I'll give it another shot at some point, but I just wasn't finding myself interested. Like I didn't care that he was dumped. And I think it follows him and his friend as they go on like a little road trip to kind of cheer him up from being dumped. And I just didn't find myself caring <laughs> but maybe at some point I will. This book does have little footnotes which I thought were funny. Um, It was kind of like Colin was like annotating his own story and was providing little tidbits and most of them were pretty funny so I did like that but once again I think it's for a bit of a younger reader which is not surprising. This is a young adult novel so I might just be a little bit old for it. <laughs> So that is it for everything that I read and didn't finish in January. If you like these kinds of videos, please give me a thumbs up. I'm not sure how my audience will like these, but I've been getting into books so much lately and I don't want to limit myself to only talking about budgeting. So I figured I would let you guys know what I've been reading and some of you in my other videos said that you'd be interested. So if you enjoyed it, as I said before, give it a thumbs up, leave a comment down below letting me know that you liked it and I will have all of the books that I read and didn't finish linked down below. They will be Amazon affiliate links. If you are interested in purchasing the books um, I encourage you to use my affiliate link so I can get a small portion of the proceeds but of course you are not required to. 
and I will also leave my Goodreads down below too. I think that's something that people like follow each other on. I really don't know. I'm so new into this like new age book reading thing. I didn't even know that magnetic bookmarks were a thing. Like that's like new technology to me. My dog got a hold of this one, but they like clip on your page. It's just the coolest thing ever. So leave a comment down below if you have any suggestions for book related videos. I could do a tour of all of the books that I have, which are not a ton, but are significantly more than I had in the end of 2019. So let me know what you guys think and I will see you in the next video. Bye. Oh,